Sir, thank you so much for joining me. Eight of our men are on death row in Qatar. Sir, uh, my first question. Do you think we can get them back? Well, let me put it this way. I don't expect them to be executed. But uh, even if the death sentence is uh, sort of uh, removed, reversed, there will be X years of imprisonment. So it's not a question of getting them back tomorrow. We have to work hard to get a uh, pardon from the Amir. And then, as I said, once the death sentence is reversed, there will be X years of imprisonment. And uh, maybe some time will have to spend in jail in Qatar. But after that, we have a treaty with Qatar, which says that uh, a Qatari national uh, jailed in India can go to Qatar and spend uh, the jail sentence in Qatar. So it's the same thing applies to an Indian national in Qatar. So, you know, so we can get them back. But most important thing is to get the death sentence reversed. And, and, and why is it all a secret? Why is all of this a secret? Nobody is talking about it. Nobody wants to say why, what exactly happened. Well, this is a very sensitive matter of spying for a third country. We don't know which country, but reports, some reports say it was for Israel. We don't know. But as regards the secrecy, I suppose the families might have been told by our government not to, you know, speak to the media and all that. And uh, Qatar may not have any incentive to talk in public about it. Why should they? The CEO of this company called Dara is, is an Omani and he is left uh, free and uh, while Indians are, are arrested. Why is that? Well, no, he is not left free. He was also in uh, uh, imprisoned, but now he is free because he may have been, uh, you know, sort of the top, but uh, I don't think he was a naval person. You know what I mean? So this okay. is a na naval matter, as you know. Uh, it is, uh, um, after all, this company was giving, uh, up uh, skilling up the, the Qatari Navy, uh, in particular in regard to some, uh, midget submarines, you know, inducting these submarines into the Navy. Uh, submarines are from, uh, from Italy. So he may or may not have been, you know, involved in it, you know. Our government has been trying to, uh, defend our officers, our former officers, for the last one year. So, which makes me believe that our former officers are innocent. Otherwise, why would our country defend them? So, if that is the case, why did we fail in defending them? Well, let me sort of uh, comment on that. It is our consular responsibility to defend our nationals when they are abroad, even if they have done something wrong. Okay we still provide them as much protection as we can. So just because we are giving them protection, it doesn't follow that they are innocent. They may be innocent. I'm not saying they are not, nor am I saying they are. All that I'm saying is that because we have given them protection or consular assistance, it doesn't follow they are innocent. Sir, how is our relation with Amir Ahmad Tami? Well, he had come here, he had come here in 2016. And, uh, I believe, uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi had gone there in, you know, the year before that. And uh, when he was here, we signed a number of agreements, including an agreement which says that, you know, either national, a national of, uh, uh, uh Qatar, uh, sentence in India can spend part of his, uh, sentence uh, in Qatar. You know, things like that. So it is not, you know, let us not look at it personally. Let me make it very clear to you. The Amir of Qatar is a, a young person. He has very progressive ideas. So it is not that, you know, he wanted to do something to uh, spite us. No, there is something serious. In other words, Qatar believes it has evidence which implicates these personnel. Whether that evidence is uh, uh, really good or not, I cannot say because uh, we have not seen. But I can say that Qatar honestly believes that there is a case of espionage.
you have been the ambassador to qatar indian ambassador to qatar tell me sir how how is our relationship overall uh, with qatar been uh, uh, historically well historically we have had good relationship with qatar and uh, when i was there we had one little dispute in the sense that uh, they sent back an air india flight did i tell you about that no you haven't okay what happened was that uh, there was uh, a qatar airways flight you know before a pilot enters our airspace our atc asks the pilot please tell us your name and uh, the uh, number of your license you know, and its validity so in one case uh, the pilot did not have a valid license but we nevertheless let him enter and told him please don't come again with an without a valid license but the guy came again after a couple of weeks and then we sent back the flight and then qatar sent back an air india flight in other words retaliated so then ema called me and uh, so i told them either you can deal with it in india in delhi or i can deal with it in doha so they said no no please deal with it in doha in that case i said we shall agree together what to tell the media and when and of course i would keep the ema posted instantaneously so i asked my office to get me an appointment with the foreign minister who was very powerful because his niece was the sheka i mean the amir's wife you know what I okay mean. Yes. so he was very powerful and he was much older than the amir and you know that sort of thing so before my office could ask for an appointment he summoned me so very sternly he told me restore our flights so i had to explain to him what happened and i said the correct thing would be of course i didn't put it that bluntly but uh, substance was they should restore our flights and then we shall restore uh, their flights yes. whereas he wanted it the other way around that he wanted us to restore their flights and then he might restore our flights so he insisted then at one point i told him excellency i will uh, uh i report to my government faithfully what you have told me and i shall get the answer as soon as possible but meanwhile our position stands namely you should restore our flights first and left him that was at about 11:45 in the morning well 7 o'clock in the evening the dgca director general of civil aviation calls me saying that excellency can he whether he can come to me immediately i said come over so what he wanted was that uh, he wanted me to give in writing that uh, once their flights are uh, restored we shall immediately sorry once our flights air india flights are restored they would immediate we would immediately restore their flights so i gently refused to give it in writing saying that look given the cordial relations between our two countries there is no need for to give anything in writing but uh, i have assured the external affairs minister and i repeat my assurance once you restore my flights your flights will be restored immediately well he left me by 7:30 and by 7:45 or 8 o'clock i don't know he called me back at eh? 8 pm excellency your flights are restored so i thanked him but then i added i would request you to telephone air india office and uh, so that air india office also should telephone me to say that they have received the message he agreed when well, air india called me very shortly saying that flights have been restored then i told air india that you can tell them that qatar airways flights are also restored and that as a matter of courtesy i will also be calling the dgca so that is how it was resolved so my point is that qatar listens to reason you know what i mean it's not they are not difficult that way you know so we have to use uh, 
uh, mature diplomacy to resolve this. Which means, uh, do I understand that uh, mature diplomacy was not used for the last one year uh, when uh, this case was going on? I uh, let me put it this way: the, the try. You see, they were picked up thirtieth uh, of August, twenty twenty-two, and uh, they gave us consular access only after we requested. Okay, that means uh, our embassy was in touch with uh, the naval officers. Okay. Later, the trial started in March, March this year, and there have been seven sessions, and we had employed a law uh, an advocate. So, in March we came to know what the charges were, and if the charges are about espionage, and that too, you know, involving national security. Well, we should have taken it much more seriously. You know that our vice president went there uh, yes. at the time of FIFA. So this case is still going on. Do you understand? Yes. And uh, the media told us that uh, vice president was a brief visit, and this was not taken up. And not only that, not only that. If you remember, uh, Nurpur Sharma. But you know the BJP spokesperson. Yes, she she had said something which she shouldn't have said about uh, the Holy Prophet. Okay, and Qatar was very annoyed, and uh, the Indian ambassador was summoned to the Foreign Office even when the Vice President was in town. They had also in the draft program there was a lunch with the Amir, but in the final program agreed to between uh, the two sides before. Our vice president left India. There was no lunch. So what I mean is that it was very clear that Qatar was upset with us. Then what did we do? I understand that we extended an invitation to the Amir to come to India on a state for a state visit. But what I understood privately from the Qatari side is that uh, they were in no hurry to fix the dates. Okay, so that was then. All right. Then yes. the smart thing would have been to invite the entire GCC to G20. After all, they are our neighbors, isn't it? Maritime neighbors. We have so, so much at stake there, correct? And it is the host government's privilege to invite. Okay. So what did we do? I mean, Saudi Arabia is already a member, and we invited only UAE. Smart thing would have been to invite the other five. Saudi Arabia doesn't need invitation, and if we had done that, Amir would have come. And also, you know, it, it, and it is customary sometimes when you invite a head of state. Before that, you know, you send your foreign minister or somebody else, you know, to convey that and all that. You know, there are certain courtesies and protocols involved in such matters. But anyway, short point is: if we had invited the entire GCC, I am sure others would have come, and Qatar would have come, because you know you, you can't be the only one not coming. And then there would have been a, a personal meeting, you see, and this could have been discussed. I am not suggesting that they would have uh, uh, what shall I say? Ended their judicial process. No, judicial process would have gone. You know what I mean. Would have proceeded. But the point is, there could have been an understanding if it were, you know, something as severe as death sentence and all that. There can be a settlement at the highest level. So that 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 is why I said MEA could have been more proactive. MEA could have been more proactive. Absolutely, sir. Tell me, uh, uh, how how would be? Uh, is, uh, I'm initially surprised uh, at, at what you said because uh, we were not given consular access. Uh, a country like Qatar, who claims to you said is a fair country, who is a right-minded people, but uh, uh, not giving access to uh, council isn't that unfair, sir? No, that's wrong. They did give council consular access. What I said was that they gave consular access after we asked for it. They did give. 
In so fact, it took uh, us that much time to ask for it. Is what the problem is. We I am so not suggesting time. that. I am not suggesting after after we asked, they gave it. In fact, that is the correct procedure. You have to ask for it. But why did we take I mean, so much time? When, when, no, no, let me put it this way: when the two countries have a, when the foreign office and the embassy has a good relationship, I mean, you know, somebody from the foreign office could have said, "Hey, your guy so and so is in jail." Please ask for consular access. We'll give it to you. You know what I mean. But anyway, whatever it is, let's not make too much uh, uh, out of it. The point is, they gave consular access. Access, and you know that uh, on the first of October, the ambassador and uh, the deputy met them. You know what I mean. Earlier also, not the first time. Okay, so consular access was given. There is nothing to crib about it. I want to know uh, again as a common citizen, uh, what would be our people going through right now uh, in the jail? Are they being troubled? They're being tortured. What uh, would be their state in the jail currently, sir? Okay, as far as we know, initially they were kept in solitary confinement, hmm. but uh, after X days or X weeks, whatever it is, they were uh, uh, sort of you know two of them in the same room. You know what I mean. To in bed, you know what I mean, and I don't think there is any reason to believe that they have been tortured. But in fact, their families have been in touch with them. You know that, and our embassy has been in touch with them. What I want to tell you is that most probably, I'm only guessing, Qatar has what one may call electronic evidence. You know what I mean, sir. Why is it that? Uh while at one end we say we are Vishwa gurus and we have got tremendous clout and we have got huge influence over the globe and all that, why is that? Most often than not, we are not taken seriously. You see, uh, 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 Vijay Malaya is still in London having a, a blast. Nothing has happened to him. Neither Modi is still uh, in uh, in uh, the British prisons. Why are uh, why are our requests not taken seriously? You mentioned uh, two of them who are there, whom we want. To be extradited to India, but uh, have you heard of a man called Christian Michel? Yes, Christian Michel uh, was related to Augusta Westland case. Uh, just uh, let me tell my viewers, uh, related to Augusta Westland case. Do you know th that he had been detained in India for uh, almost five years, if not more? Yes. Well, last I heard. There are no charges now. Let me let let me tell you a little more. UK has, uh, uh, you know, the family of uh, Christian Michel in uh, in United Kingdom went to their uh, foreign office, saying that they should uh, take up this matter with the government of India. You know what the foreign office told uh, his wife? Well, uh, our hands are rather tied. We don't want to upset India. Uh, can you please uh, uh, ask a member of parliament to raise this uh, uh, in the House of Commons uh, so that you know we can use that to take up the matter with India? You see, what I am trying to say is that as far as the British are concerned. In the case of their national, we have inducted right. Okay, so we cannot be standing on a high moral ground. So what we are technically saying is, listen, uh, you know, it's not that our hands are clean, therefore we should expect the world to uh, behave differently with us or behave. No, uh, no I'm not saying that. Is that what I'm you're not, saying? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying is that in the case of uh, our getting two uh, of our nationals from. Great Britain, well, Great Britain wants to get one of their nationals from here. So, unless there is a quid pro quo, nothing is going to happen. Uh, let me ask you a question once again, sir. You see, fair enough. Christian Michel is uh, is a is a case in point. I agree. But Britain, if you go to see, this is not the first time. It's not a first offender. Britain started with uh, that uh, Nadim Sheikh case, uh, where he ran after. Uh, Gulshan Kumar murder, he went to Britain and Britain didn't uh, send him back. Uh, and then it, it starts from there. So it's not just one case. It's not one particular case. Christian Michel happened 2022, December uh, that too. 
Uh, no, 28, no, 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 2018. He has been here almost five years. 2018, yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, his Supreme Court hearing was 2022. My apologies. So the point is, uh, this has been happening quite for uh, for quite some time as far as Britain is concerned. So I don't think we offended them first. They, they were the one who did it to us. No, I was only saying that in this case. Now, as regards the other point you are making, what we have to understand is that in the United Kingdom, there is always a procedure. The government just cannot take a decision to extradite somebody. That person can go to uh, the court. You know what I mean. And once it goes to the court, it can then it can go to a higher court. And then the uh, Home Secretary has to take the final decision. I My question is basically, like I said, uh, from a layman's perspective, do we really have global cloud? Has it changed exponentially in the last 10 years? This is my question, my straight question. Well, the answer to that is that uh, um, India is not the only country where the government claims to have a lot of clout. Many other countries also do the same thing. So what you are telling me, sir, <laughs> sir, what you are telling me, therefore, is <laughs> and in a, in a perfect diplomatic uh, uh, response, you are telling me that we have nothing more than any other country has in the world. We are what we were no, before no, 2000. I'm, I'm, uh, no, I'm not, not saying that. that. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I think I we know. have to understand. No, no, we have to understand that uh, uh, recently our clout has, go, you know, uh, increased, but it may not have increased the same level as claimed sometimes. My last question sir, is, uh, when you say clout, uh, is it a leader's clout or is it the nation's clout? Because the leader's clout doesn't seem to be benefiting the nation when the nation is in crisis. It doesn't seem to be benefiting. So I am seeing this as two separate things, the leader's clout and the, and the nation's clout. No, I think uh, you are separating two things which cannot always be separated. Uh, diplomacy has become these days uh, very personalized. You know that uh, Biden called uh, uh, Putin a killer. You know that he, he called Xi Jinping an autocrat. You know what I mean? So it has become very personalized these days. That was not the case when I was in office. So, so the leader's clout and the country's clout cannot always be separated. Uh, somewhere down the line, our leader's clout, the way I see it, is not seen translating into the country's clout. Uh, this is what I see. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is what I see. And that's the reason I asked you that question. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving you the answer. I'm giving you the answer. <laughs> sure, sure. Sure, sir. Thank you so much for talking to me as always, sir. What a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, sir.